show you how to paper a wall which is uh, it's got a light switch on it it's got a radiator <coughs> on the wall um, each radiator is different this one it's quite close and it's really rough at the back of it halfway down so you're probably not going to get the paper full length all the way down but you know most people only come so close to radiators you're not always looking right down the back <clears throat> so as long as you go halfway down with the paper and then try and get halfway up from the bottom that should be fine um, and I've got this conduit to paper around you can paint them and leave it but they always stand out a lot more um, if you paper over it it just sits back against the wall a lot better uh, and it hides it. This is the wallpaper that I'm uh, putting up. Super fresco easy. Um, it's a paste the wall first paper, but I always just paste the paper. Um, there's no soaking time. Basically, paste your paper and put your, put your length up. Um, this is the paste I'm using, Solvite. So I've got that mixed up, ready to go. Uh, and that's a plane passing over. I'm right near the airport, so you may hear the odd plane or two. Right. So this is the uh, actual paper rolled out on the bench. Um, it's a very fine hatched pattern. It's very difficult to put up, to be honest, and there is a match in it, and um, it's a repeat match. Let's just have a look. There's the symbols. So that just shows you, um, paste the wall first. It's easy peelable. Uh, it's washable. And it's good with the sun. Uh, and the repeat pattern is 64 centimetres. Tacking a roll of your wallpaper and using a pencil uh, that's got a hard lead, you don't want a soft lead. Offer it up to the door casing and you want a quarter of an inch for the paper to go around so you can trim off down the side. So for, allow a quarter of an inch in and put a mark. I mean, you don't have to be so high up on this one because we're just working out where it's going to sit on the radiator. Um, follow that along. So it's not going to work out how I hoped, but I'm going to leave that. Because when I come to this part, I'll use a full length straight down and literally cut out a centre piece and drop down either side. I may attempt to get the full piece drop down the bottom, but we'll see how that goes when it comes to that. And then we just piece in. Right. I'm going to plumb the line down the wall. So going off the mark that I put on before, set your plumb line and your pencil. And you want to get the string on the sensor on your mark, letting the plumb bob settle. Once you're happy it's in the centre, you can make some more marks. Just behind the string. And we're 
right to the bottom. ready to paste the first layer. Right, it's so difficult to work out where the pattern is with the uh, tape measure. But what I'm going to do is cut the first layer. I've just measured the wall, it's 79 inches that I want. That's an inch top and bottom for overlap. Cut. I, don't, I know we need two lengths for the first bit, so you can cut two lengths. Making sure the paper is nice and straight down the edge of the bench. Now, using the same roll, what you want to do is put it to the edge of the other paper, just not fully overlapping it, and then you can look pattern that repeats the edge to make sure it's exactly the same. And again, this paper is a lot of nightmare. there's a step in the ceiling and it actually goes higher I'm only going to cut two lengths because the pattern's going to change for the uh, top of the next length going along and just cut the excess off always making sure your paper's nice and straight on your bench because if you make a cut and your paper's off the cut's going to be off Always follow the straight to your bench. Don't need straight edges. Straight up. Now, what I'll do with this paper is I mark the tops. Usually a full line across, not too heavy. The reason I do a full line, and I tend to just do it on every length, because if I ever cut edges off, I always know where the top is on off cuts. It just becomes habit to how I do things, no matter what length it is. Now then, taking the paper, lightly fold the edge over. You don't want to create too many creases, and then just roll it back on itself. This paper is not too bad, it's uh, not that springy, some papers are worse. It's 
quite a nice paper to work with there. And then just give it a few rolls around and break its back. And don't worry too much if you do get the odd crease in it and such, because when it dries out on the wall, it pulls all the creases out. But you still have to be very careful and try not to get the creases in in the first place. But, uh, right, and roll it out on the bench. Keeping them both in the centre. And then, to paste your first length, it up to the edge of the bench. Right, and you're, there, you're ready to paste your first length. Always pushing out over the edge, never pull back across because you're just going to pull paste underneath the paper. You want to make sure you put plenty of paste on. And have a few passes over the edges. Always trying to not get paste on the front of your paper or on your hands. You know. That's literally that's ready to go up straight away. There's no soaking time because this is paste the wall first paper. Holding your wallpaper. Um, I mean the reason you hold it like that is because you're nice and uh, straight with it. You know, there's no wrinkles in it. You've not grabbed it with one hand or one edge, so it's not creased. You can see on this wall I've got the light switch to work round and I've got my plumb edge ready to go. So I'm taking your paper, allowing it to just slightly lie on the floor, offer it up to the wall, holding this side off the wall and only working with one hand length of bit of paper kind of. Find your plumb line and allow in an inch round for the overcut, bring it down to your plumb line. You want to work that line down best you can on your plumb line. Again, I've got the uh, light switch here, which I'm going to have to cut in a second, so just let all that sit back on the wall for a second and where your light block is find the corners push with your thumbs on the corners which puts some marks on the paper and then just letting the paper come back a bit because what you don't want to do is scratch the socket on the wall taking your scissors pop a hole in the paper and cut just over the corners in very neat cuts. You 
once you've done that, now we come back off the wall a bit. Again, keep following your plumb line. That's your most important bit, that plumb line. And once you're satisfied, it's nice and straight down your plumb line. Taking your papering brush, push out from side to side. Never up and down because you're stretching the pattern. Always side to side. satisfied with it you can work your way down making sure there's no bubbles in it up to the bottom yeah making sure you're following your plumb line to cut off round but there's certain things like this lock which I've got to work round on the, the lock up here so you've got to make small relief cuts in certain places just to allow the paper to sit back show you some of these cuts in a minute uh, oh, there's a bit of a wire up here as well and the ceiling's a bit bumpy so you know you can only try your best in certain areas with papering I'll cut the ceiling first, taking the back of your scissors because you don't want to use a standing knife across the top of the ceiling, you'll cut into the plaster. So, using the back of your scissors, finding the corner of the ceiling, pull it along, making quite you know, you've got to put a lot of pressure on it, and then peel your paper back. And you'll see a fine line going up the back of your paper. You've got to follow that as neatly as you can. Sometimes they're difficult to see, but it is the only way. I mean, you can sometimes put a pencil mark on the front of the paper um, but you always try it this way first do is wipe off the paste on the top with a nice clean cloth and then I'll show you some of these cuts and then I'll show you cutting around the white socket. Okay. 
very important to wipe off the paste because if you don't, over time it can go black and next time you come to decorate you won't realise it's there and the paste, once the paint goes over the top of it, bubbles up and it peels off. That's the cut around the socket. Just needs trimming off now and tucking in behind the socket. And again, that's the cut across the top of the ceiling. Bit of wire in the corner. So I've got the trim off round the edge first which I'll probably mark with a pencil. Uh, a couple of relief cuts that I've made around the socket still needs final trimming. See that to the corners and down. Again, a couple of relief cuts so it nicely tucks into everything. And it's just got to be trimmed off down the bottom and down the side. So I'll show you that now. Okay, trimming off the paper around the socket. You can sometimes use your pencil and make a couple of fine lines down the paper so you know exactly where you're cutting to. I mean, when you really do get used to it, you can literally just bend the paper back and cut it like that, nigh on on the line. Um, but sometimes it's, it's better just being on the safe side. Right, wipe the excess of the paste off. And then what I'm going to do is make sure the electric's off first, unscrew it. Okay, back off the socket and then be very careful ease it back a bit taking your time tuck the paper behind now you don't want to be pushing because you'll just tear the paper once you take your time just let it ease down the back again them little cuts you see It'll disappear. When you put it together there. But it's important just to go over that edge with the cut so you're not stressing the paper. And then you put marks on it. Right, it's not too bad at all. And you can screw that back. Too bad at all though. The plastering's a bit wonky, so the socket's not sitting perfect on the wall to be honest, but uh, that's not my problem. Right, and there you have it. Okay, now with this edge you've got to be really careful. Um, Can, you could use the back of your scissors and mark the back of it and try and follow the line. Sometimes I do that. Um, but with this paper, 
it's really difficult to see and it's awkward when you're cutting some angles so what I'm going to do is mark it with a pencil you've got to be really careful because this line that goes on now you've always got to make sure you cut on the edge of the pencil so the pencil lines coming off and not left on the paper so it's really important where you make the, the, the line so I'm actually instead of using my pencil that way against the wall I'm using it this way against the actual casing so I know that when it's cut there will just be the right amount of paper left on around Right, then taking your scissors, just release the paper off the wall. And again, taking your time, just cut up the side of the line, the pencil, making sure you take the pencil line off. This paper is quite a nice paper to cut and um, sometimes you can't just push your scissors along that's not too bad at all Right, that's not too bad at all. That. Just a couple of little dreams there. What I'm going to do is uh, peel this back all the way down again. I'm going to get some overlap adhesive and run it down the edge um, just because I've been playing about with it and you've got to make sure there's enough to stick the paper back and stay stuck back. I've got a small amount of border adhesive in here and a small brush and I'm just going to wipe down the wall. Again, it just guarantees this edge sticks. You don't want this coming off near, near the door. And once you put the adhesive on, taking your cloth, just wipe any excess paste and adhesive off anything. Make sure it's nicely tucked in. I'll give you a quick look at that edge. Again, you know, you can only do your best at times. 
with edges that you're actually following. I'm going to use my pencil for this bottom edge. Uh, sometimes you can use your scissors if it actually marks the paper, you know, across like that. But you can't see nothing really with this, there's nothing there. You sometimes can resort and use a razor blade, um, but you're going to cut into the skirting at times uh, and it can tear the paper and it's just awkward at times. So again, a pencil making sure you get the line in the right place. And then you can cut it off. Making sure you're cutting the pencil line off. It might seem slow, but there's no rush with papering. You get it right, your paper stays on for ages. Alright, there you have it. ready for my second piece. Now because these were cut at the same time and I know they're exactly the same length, as long as I leave an inch round the top when I'm offering the paper up to the wall, I'll know the pattern should be thereabouts in the right place so that I've just got to slightly adjust it to work out where it is because this paper is just terrible. Right, taking your paper, allow it to drop on the floor slightly, and then only offering the left hand side of the paper up to the wall first with your inch overhang round the ceiling. And what you've got to try and do is find out where the pattern is. Now, this is about as hard as it gets. about it now once you've got it looking correct the pattern in one area make sure you follow it down and double check it and then once you're satisfied taking your brush start spreading your paper out side to side Sure, there's no bubbles. Always making sure your paper is not overlapped, it's just butt up. Sometimes what you find is there might be a slight gap and then it touches, slight gap, touches, slight gap. That's nothing to do with your, your paper and technique, it's to do with the paper and the way it's being rolled up and shrink wrapped in the manufacturing process. The only thing you can do with that is once you put your length up and as you're working with it, you need to try and manipulate the bits where there's a gap slightly in and slightly out, slightly in, slightly out. It's difficult but it can be done.
see I'm using the back of my nails at times. Um, you can use a seam roller, but I tend just to use the back of my nails. Why I'm already down here at the bottom, I'm going to cut this length at the bottom, this piece. But to make sure you don't get any paste on the front of your paper as well. Um, so you can give that a wipe over sometimes with your cloth, make sure it's nice and clean. I'm going to rinse my cloth now and then cut the top edge. cuts I'm going to use the back of the scissors cutting paper you never actually go all the way through the scissors to the end because you just stop just before the end because that last bit can fluff the paper up. So just remember that. I'm going to rinse my cloth now and I'm just going to wipe up the joints just to move any, remove any excess paste. And then you can have a look down it and you can see if there's any other marks on it. You can have a look at the joints on okay. <laughs> Now trust me, the joint is there. It is just there. Now, just so you believe me. There's the joint. Right, so if you're good at your papering, you should be able to hide your joints perfectly. Go. Not overlapped, just nicely butt up. Now, like I said, this paper is an absolute pain, but it's matched. 
again, there's the joint somewhere there. Uh, it's matched. Right then, onwards and upwards. Okay, papering round this radiator. <clears throat> Obviously, you can't see what I'm doing at the top, and um, so you know, I'll try my best and you can see what you can really. It's difficult to film and do this. Again, finding your pattern first of all. Now what you need to do is making sure it's just the back of the paper you're marking. That look a little bit. Allow the paper to go down the back of the radiator and find the brackets. And when you've found the brackets, just mark the top of them. You can usually either scratch them with your finger and that'll cut through them. Mark them with a pencil or a screwdriver. Once you've marked them, allow the paper to come over the front of the radiator. And because you've got, you, because you're keeping the, rain, the paper straight, you've already got it plumbed in line. Follow the mark down. Trying to cut straight as you can up to the mark. You can do it on the other side as well. Once you've cut it, you can fold that edge up, make it easier to tuck down the back. Same with the other edge, you can tuck that up. And the centre edge, I'm going to try and get it straight down the back. I'm just going to fold the bottom up slightly. Alright, so then back up to this and what you want to try and do is slide it down the back again it really is not easy um, paste sticking to everything It's going to have any of this. No, nope. right. So I've tried that way, it's not having any of it. So what I'll do is find halfway in the back of the radiator and cut off that piece. Save that, put the underneath, and again return to that. Not easy at all. If you just take your turn, you can usually manipulate it. It's just 
just about taking your time. And eventually you'll get there. And you can release that to the bottom. Make sure you clean all the paste off the paper. Sorry, off the radiator. And this last little bit going down the back of the radiator, you can use a stick that's not got any sharp edges on it. And you can just push the paper into place. that's it. What I tend to do is I'll put the center piece in underneath, make sure it's in the right place and then trim the paper off. So you can have a quick look at that. Again, it really isn't easy but that's quite neat. You know. Let's have a look straight down the bracket. Yeah. As far down as you can see really you can't uh, tell it's not been papered all the way to the bottom. I'm on to this uh, next piece for the conduit. Now I've got a full length cut on the board so I'm going to paste that. And what I'm going to do is measure across and just round half inch onto this conduit. Right? So then I'm going to cut that section and put that on. So I'll show you that piece once it's on. So I'm going to do this at um, seven and a half inches. Gives me enough overlap round. Right, making sure you've got the right edge on your bench so when it goes up on the wall you cut the right edge off. We said it was seven and a half inches. Now, because it's difficult paper to mark this and you see where you're going, I'm going to use my pencil. Um, finding the seven and a half inches on the side of your bench using your finger and your pencil. making sure you trim off the pencil line. Well, actually keeping the pencil line on the piece that you're pulling off because it will be covered up with the next piece.
Okay, that's that next piece on. Now, what I'm going to do with this edge is just peel it back. I mean, that's sat slightly round onto the conduit, that is. So, I'm going to peel it back and then using the overlap adhesive, I'm going to put plenty of overlap adhesive in there and that'll help um, make sure it won't come off the pipe, the conduit. This next piece I'm going to measure from there round the conduit and onto the wall which is three inches. Okay, cutting off the same length of paper we just cut the other length off, put it back to the edge. Measure your three inches. Okay, that's the piece up round the conduit now. You can see it's been cut down there, it's overlapped round. So the next piece on the bench there, I've measured it, I put a mark on, it comes round and the paper's then going to overlap round and I'm going to trim it back to that edge. So I'm going to pull my line down there, and put the piece round, trim it off and then one more final piece to the wall and it's finished and you can have a look once it's done I've just got one final piece to put on and I'm all done ok that's that wall finished that was one difficult paper that is now the tom's yet Back of the radiator.